Let's start with strength-based design. Uh, why I start with strength-based design is that unless you are doing, you are performing a nonlinear analysis, the design that you are following the seismic cause worldwide is strength-based design. When we say strength-based design, it means that you calculate an equivalent seismic force acting on the building. You distribute this seismic force and you provide sufficient strength for your building to resist this seismic force. Like in this example, you can see a bridge bend here with the mass concentrated on the deck level. The seismic, the, when there is an earthquake excitation, the seismic forces, uh, inertial seismic forces are acting on the, on the mass of the structure. Then as a response, moments, base shears develop in the structural system and you design your system. If we design this bridge pan as elastic, the structural elements uh, should have had sufficient capacity to resist these seismic forces without any damages. However, what we do in strength-based design is not like that. What we do is we divide the elastic forces by a strength reduction factor, sometimes it is called behavior factor, and we design our structures to this level of seismic force. This means that however the seismic forces are acting at this level, and we design our structure at this level of seismic forces, this means that some damage will occur in our structural elements, but our structural system should have enough capacity to resist this deformation. This was the design for seismic forces. However, designed for normal load, what we call that load, lie load, wind load, snow load, traffic load is uh, different than design for seismic load. In design for normal load, we do not want any damage from our structure. We provide sufficient strength to our structural members to resist the normal loads without any damage. However, for seismic actions, it is opposite. We provide less strength than the seismic forces and we accept that our building will go beyond the elastic deformation and it will suffer some def deformation and damages, but the building needs to be stable at the end of the earthquake without a total collapse. This is how we design for normal load. As you see, these are the levels. Th this is the level for uh, dead load, uh, dead load plus lie load. Then we increase it with some factors Plus, we have some uh, margins for the material strength, where we uh, reduce the strength of characteristic strength of uh, materials by some factors. They, they are different in different codes. Actually, where we have to design our structure is at this level, that plus lie load. However, we have a margin of safety here, a great margin of safety to resist the uh, normal load. In seismic design, it is uh, a little bit different. This is the, actually the demand of earthquake force level uh, that the earthquake that develops uh, when an earthquake hits the structure. But we design our structure at this level, that load plus earthquake load divided by a force reduction factor. We design our structure at this level. However, we might have a little bit higher strength due to the reduced material strength. The expected strength of the material might be a little bit larger at this level. And uh, after this level, the building goes, uh, the building gets damaged and some hinge mechanism starts to develop. The building should have enough capacity to resist this level of uh, deformation. The deformation level depends on the amount of seismic action. And then for a service level earthquake, which we can say a return, an earthquake with a return period of about 50 years, the deformation will be very limited, maybe some minor cracks, some hairline cracks that, that can be repairable. For the design level earthquake, where you design your structure, the building will go a big amount of nonlinear deformation, uh, which means damage in the building that can be repaired or maybe not repaired after an earthquake. And for the extreme level earthquake, where we design special structures like hospitals or highway structures, uh, important structures, the building goes further deformation and it, it should not collapse at the extreme level earthquake. So when we say earthquake resistant design, I put an exclamation mark here because 
when we say earthquake resistant, the people might think that the building will not suffer any damage. But when we say earthquake resistant design, the civil engineers, when, when say uh, earthquake and earthquake resistant design, this means that there will be damage in the building after a major earthquake. The earthquake resistant design relies on the damage under the design earthquake. Let's see a building that was uh, a full scale building that was tested in Japan uh, and at E-Defense Laboratory. And let's see how, we, how it behaves. It's a conventional design. When you see there are deformations, I mean, because of the relative drifts of the stories, there are deformations, especially in the beam column joints. And this is expected. When we do a strength-based design, we have to follow the capacity design rules to, to have the damage at the desired locations of our building and not to have collapsed.